Kali has a face reveal, both Caden and Ashley survive on Veermeyer. Lighting and graphics are better, planets are more populated, and there are new levels and new cutscenes. Shepard Commander. Who are you? This platform sustained heavy damage. I present to you 36 Mass Effect mods that will blow your mind. And you can install nearly all of them with just one click. More about that at the end of the video. Diversification Project. It completely changes the environment of Mass Effect 1. Citadel is more populated with characters like CSEC officers and alien diplomats. There are more female Turians. Patients are being given treatment in Dr. Michelle's clinic. All NPCs have different clothes and hairstyles, and markets are full of traders, buyers, and mercenaries. Novera is overhauled as well. There are rapid transit terminals, where you can quickly call new crew members. More props are placed everywhere. Population is more diverse, hence the mod's name. You can even encounter bodies of dead scientists in Novera labs, giving Pick 15 facility more horror vibes. And this is just the beginning. The upcoming updates will feature story characters using unique weapons on Eden Prime. Missions on the Citadel will be started by interacting with databots. All doors will use smoother animations, and in the future, the Elder has plans to overhaul all major Mass Effect 1 locations and even Uncharted worlds. It's been a year since I posted Mass Effect Mod Showcase, and in the meantime, some of the most popular mods were updated. Community patches now fix all major bugs across all three games. Here is Tally actually using a straw. Community patch for Mass Effect 1 includes a new mod settings tab, which players can use to personalize mods when in-game. Both unofficial patches are also integrated with Persistent Settings mod, that allows to change camera field of view. Ahem mod, that makes Shepard survive game ending. Commander! Keep looking! Shepard! Over here! Shepard. Is now fully compatible with Citadel Epilogue mod, which allows to complete Citadel DLC after Reapers are defeated. Saren's stage's development is now complete, and Saren's appearance will change as the game progresses. He wears ropes in the game beginning, a modified armor mid-game, and is fully enhanced with Reaper tech in the end. Appearance modification menu received more customization options, including one that allows Shepard to have a different hairstyle for casual and combat situations, the author has confirmed that Mass Effect 2 version of the mod is in development, and that Mass Effect 1 version of that mod will not only allow player to customize Shepard's appearance and clothes, but it will also allow to change squadmates' outfits. Basically, there will be a new button available when interacting with their equipment lockers. Here is Ashley wearing a dress for example. Early recruitment now allows to recruit Legion early. Shepard Commander. Who are you? This platform sustained heavy damage. Power is low. Repair is required. Action. Malfunction. Malfunction. And finally, EGM. Story characters will visit Normandy as the game progresses. This is Grissom Academy students, and these are Geth Primes. A new weapon display is added in the hangar bay, where all unlocked weapons are showcased. Galaxy map is also updated. You can access every star system from the game beginning, like Collector's Base for example. There are fleet icons on the map telling you which faction controls each system. Planet descriptions will change as star systems fall to advancing Reaper forces, and you can even check out allied fleets you've rallied before launching the final assault on the Reapers. Out of all original Mass Effect games, Mass Effect 3 always seemed to me like it was incomplete at times. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you... Project Variety the most ambitious Mass Effect 3 overhaul to date. There are hundreds of new NPCs populating civilian hubs, and this population is fully dynamic, being affected by both story progression and players' decisions. For example, Geth will arrive on the Citadel after making peace with Quarians, and there will be people protesting against them. Squadmates wear casual outfits when off-duty, they even dress up for special occasions. In fact, you can customize the look of nearly every single major character in the game, when using elevators, Shepard can visit 5 new locations. They include Sisek HQ, Karazdan, and Citadel Tower. More species have their own respective embassies. There is a Volus and another one. 
There are new advertisements, plus they change as the game progresses, and certain cutscenes are also changed. For example, Samara instead of Shepard saves her daughter in the Astori Monastery, Tali has her face revealed, and Yara sends a warning message to Alec Ryder. Plus, almost all romances are expanded. This area is off limits. You're trespassing in an official Citadel zone. So, do we give a damn about regulations now? Hell no. How about a high-speed chase before we die? Veermeyer Savior Mods. It makes it possible to save both Caden and Ashley on Veermeyer. Long story short, after arming the bomb, Shepard will have 3 minutes to rescue the missing squadmate and Salarian SDGs. Provided you succeed, there is a new cutscene. Thanks, Commander. Things got pretty hot down there. You saved my life. Both our lives. I don't know how you did it, Commander. The Alliance will come up with a whole new medal for what you pulled off here. They will both become recruitable squad members in Mass Effect 3, and will aid Shepard in her missions throughout the game, fully voiced over, so you can keep using them all the time. The mod creator is also working on a completely new mod called Hot Labs Restored, which restores cat content on Noveria. In essence, apart from adding a completely new level to the game, players will have two ways to execute a neutron purge in Hot Labs. The first choice is the same as in Vanilla, however the new option will allow Shepard to cooperate with this Salaron character named Dr. Chiyun, fully voiced over by Bioware in a section that was cut from the retail game version. Miranda mod it allows to invite Miranda onto Normandy in Mass Effect 3. Apart from being a regular squad member, she will also command a special task team that Shepard can send on missions to recover war assets. Plus, she can personally provide assists in taking down Cerberus HQ. Last year, I showcased Take Earth Back, a complete rework of the final mission of Mass Effect 3. Now it's time for Spectre expansion mods. Basically, it fills Mass Effect 3 with more lore accurate content. There are now more star systems added, with new assignments and more assets to find. You can even discover the story of Virtual Alliance, a mysterious species briefly mentioned in Cerberus Daily News. Following the fall of the Kuna, a new indoctrinated Elkor enemy will appear in the galaxy. Major galactic events, like battles, are now reported in the Spectre Terminal, and finding the Obelisk of Karza requires Shepard to land on the planet and physically retrieve it. Based on what the author has shown to me, more missions will be overhauled in the future. Dreams Remade It takes the most boring part of Mass Effect 3 dream sequences and remakes every single one of them to reflect every important decision player has made throughout the story of all three games. It's no secret that I love mods that increase immersion, and I use 5 mods to achieve that in Mass Effect 1 and 2. The Normandy project is the first one. It completely changes the role of Normandy in Mass Effect 2. For example, crew management is now a thing. You can hire personnel for each important position on the ship. I've just selected Loki drones as my security, and Turian mercenaries as my personal bodyguards. Shepard can access cargo holds, use shooting range, or acquire a tamed Varen. The entire Normandy is now full of life, and since the mod is in early stages of development, many more features will be added in the near future. Immersive Citizens It simply adds more props and NPCs to Mass Effect 2 hubs, improving Omega, Alium, and the Citadel, making those planets seem less empty. I always use it alongside 3 mods. Nos Astra Mineral Exchange, which allows Shepard to exchange mine resources for credits at a newly added terminal on Ilium. Private Message Terminal, which adds a message terminal in Mass Effect 1, similar to the ones from Mass Effect 2 and 3. And Mako's Squadmate Banter. It just makes squadmates have random conversations when using Mako on Uncharted Worlds. I'm surprised that you're willing to kill your own Reds. Aren't the Krogan just a few generations away from extinction? It's been two years since Legendary Edition was released, and three mods became the default way to improve graphics for me. A lot of textures makes textures look better, which can be best described this way. Okay, so here's the thing. So this is just a door, a normal door. If I pause the game and then zoom in onto the door lock, you can read the text. There's no way to read from this far away. Like, I mean, why is this even a thing? A lot of videos makes all in-game cutscenes native 4K, 
and if you have five dollars then also rtgi so you can have fake ray tracing and despite all of them lighting is still somehow broken well at least compared to the originals luckily there is a fix mass effect lighting overhaul or mellow in short it restores dynamic lighting to exactly how it used to work in original games, giving Mass Effect 1 a more cinematic and beautiful look. For example, stating light sources now emit light. It costs minimal performance loss and doesn't require payable shaders. And all cutscenes are properly illuminated. Besides that, Mellow also makes post-processing look similar to how it used to be in the original Mass Effect 1. It works best with Latium, a collection of different texture files improving all kinds of things. To name a few, species like Asari, Salarians, and Krogans are more detailed, certain texture artifacts are completely removed, and Garrus' armor has a Cisic logo on it. Primitives. My favorite texture mod for this game. It improves facial textures of major characters across all three games. I think its quality is quite frankly insane. Like, if you take a screenshot under correct lighting conditions, the game looks almost like a movie. And for a good measure, it also enhances eyes, eyelashes, and eyebrows. And to wrap it up, Alliance Uniform Consistency and Cerberus Uniform Consistency. Just two of my favorite consistency mods for this game. The former replaces crew member uniforms in Mass Effect 1, the latter does the same thing, but in Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect Combat is hit or miss. On one side, there's Andromeda, with great character mobility and plenty of different playstyles. On the other hand, there is Mass Effect 1. Oh, there's a big guy. There is the big guy on the screen. Da, 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 da. Da, you gotta be kidding me. Right now. You're fucking, what the hell was that? How, what the f what? what? <laughs> exactly. So, here is how to make it better. Combat Evade Maneuvers. It adds Evade ability for Mass Effect 3 multiplayer back to Mass Effect 2, so Shepard can use combat rolls, biotic dashes, and acrobatic flips to dodge incoming fire. They have physics, so Shepard can use Evade to go through glass windows or to finish off weakened enemies. And in the upcoming version, both Shepard squadmates and enemies will have access to Evade abilities as well, meaning that combat will be more varieds and enemy bosses will become a bigger threat. Combined Ammo Mods It combines hitsings and thermal clips into one unified gun system in Mass Effect 2 and 3. In short, each weapon overheats when used too long, and when that happens, you can either wait or use a thermal clip to quickly cool it down. Last year, I showcased advanced weapon models that increases weapon variety in Mass Effect 1, making combat way more fun, and streamlined weapon loadouts that, for example, allows to unequip weapons. Now it's time for Modern Weapon Pack. Basically, it ports weapons from Mass Effect 3 back to Mass Effect 2, like this N7 Hurricane, Cerberus Harrier, or Cold Actors SMG. It also adds new weapons, like this M5 Back Pistol, which is an interesting pistol shotgun hybrid, or this M89 Halberd, which is an improved version of the Matok. And since armor choices in vanilla are pretty lacking, it makes sense to share two of my favorite armor mods. Expanded Shepard Armory is the first one. Apart from adding new armors, helmets, and casual clothes, a lot of them being surface themed, it also allows to choose armors and clothes before starting missions and to use breathers instead of helmets. Now, this makes no sense from a realistic standpoint, but hey, it looks cool. While EGM armors restores many armors from Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. This includes N7 special armors, like this N7 Demolisher or this N7 Fury. It adds a brand new Alliance Marine armor and even Pathfinder armors, although you can disable the latter option when installing the mod. Okay, since the latest mod manager update, modders can actually create and share mod collections for Legendary Edition. So here's how to use one that I've put together. Step 1. Download Mass Effect Mod Manager and My Mod Collections. Links for both are in the video description. Step 2. Open Mod Manager and go to Batch Mod Installer. Step 3. Select any mod collection. Download all mods from the list on the right and when you are ready, click on Install this group. Mod Manager will automatically manage things onwards. Now, keep in mind that not all mods from this video are included in my collections since some of them are not yet available, but I play tested them so you'll be fine if you decide to use them. Roll the credits. <laughs>